Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rock Solid Live. I'm Brother Tyler Fox, trying to smile this evening. My wife says I don't smile enough, so I'm trying <laughs> to smile more. But we are glad that you're watching. Of course, whether it's on Facebook Live or YouTube, uh, this is just something that we like to do for our youth, for our community, for anyone who wants to watch here. And I really enjoy doing these videos. We do them twice a week, a Sunday night and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. And just really, really good for me. Of course, the book we're using, Critical Issues, Absolute Answers, just a great book to use. Uh, every lesson's done by a different youth leader or pastor all around the country. And since we've started this, we've been going over lessons under faith. And so we've talked about several different things. We've talked about, you know, don't be compartmentalized in your faith. Uh, we talked about repentance, grace, the Holy Spirit. And tonight, we're going to talk about one of those uh, church words again, and that's a sanctification. A sanctification is one of those words that you don't use on a regular basis. You're not really going to say it just out and about in the workplace or at school. Uh, but in the church, uh, you'll hear it. And basically what it means is to live a life that is sanctified, um, to be more and more like Christ. I looked up a definition of it, and it says uh, the definition of to sanctify is to make holy, uh, to set apart something as sacred, to purify or free from sin, and to entitle to reverence or respect. And so tonight I want to read a couple of verses out of some of Paul's letters where Paul is talking about how we are to live a sanctified life. And so if we are saved, which means if we believe in Jesus Christ, if we are that new creature we talk so much about, then how are we living? Last time we talked about the Holy Spirit and how we don't have to, to struggle by ourselves. Uh, it's not us against the world, but the Holy Spirit, that comforter, um, what Jesus himself promised that would live in us, is with us. Everywhere we go, we have that hope, we have that peace we can have that living in us if we believe and if we're living with that hope. And so tonight, just a couple of verses I want to read. Uh, first in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse 19, Paul says, Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought at a price, so glorify God with your body. I love what Paul is saying here. Don't you know? Such a powerful statement. He's saying, listen, wake up. Your body is not your body. If you are a believer, really it's not your body ever. But if you're not a believer, then of course you're not going to believe that's God's. But if you believe in Jesus, what Paul is saying is, listen, you should know that it's not yours, but it is him. It is a holy living temple for God. And that means that we should live our life in such a way that our body is holy towards God. And now I love the statement that Paul says. He says, for you are not your own. You were bought at a price. So glorify God with your body. If you are saved, it's not because you're super holy. I'm saved not because of my works. I'm not saved because I'm a minister. I'm not saved because I had grand, grandmas who went to church or because of this or because of that. I am saved because at the age of 12, I realized I was not good enough. I realized that I needed God to come in and to clean this mess up and to basically put on spiritual duct tape and to save a sinking ship. And that's what salvation is. It's God coming in, cleaning all the garbage out, and saving you from yourself, saving you from the sin, saving you from the condemnation. And then, just like what Paul is saying here, we are no longer our own. We are bought with a price. What's the price? It's what Jesus Christ did on the cross. It's the blood that he spilled for you and I. That's the price. And because of that, we should glorify him with our bodies. Now, what does it mean, glorify him with your bodies? That means make sure you understand that what you do matters. What you say, where you go, what you watch on TV, what you listen to, every action you make as a believer matters to God. And he cares about it because you're either growing closer to him or you're growing further away. Now, I, 
that's a verse that I know. That's a verse that we've studied. Hopefully you heard it before, but that's a verse that we're familiar with. But there's another verse in 2 Corinthians that I'm not as familiar with, but when I read it earlier, it was so convicting, I really want us to take a few minutes to understand it. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians, because I don't want you to think that I'm making this up. Don't just trust me because I'm a minister. So if you have your Bibles, if you have a Bible app, Look up 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to start reading in verse 15. So 2 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse 15, the Apostle Paul is writing, and he says, For to God we are the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To some we are an aroma of death leading to death, but to others an aroma of life leading to life. Who is adequate for these things? For we do not market the word of God for profit like so many. On the contrary, we speak with sincerity in Christ as from God and before God. Now, if you are a believer, I don't care if you're a sophomore in high school or if you are a 70-year-old watching this, that should convict your soul. Look at this for a moment. For we, for to God, we are the fragrance of Christ. Our lives should show other people about Jesus. And what Paul is saying is, our lives show something. It either shows life or it shows death. Listen, if we're saved, that means that Jesus has saved our soul. We're going to heaven. It's not about works. Look at the book of James. But man, the book of James also says that without works, our faith is dead. We have to know that it's important to live out our life as believers. Because if we don't, what is Paul saying? We are leading people to death. If we're not talking like a Christian, if we're not acting like a Christian, and we're saying, hey, we're saved, what we are doing is we are not showing a fragrance of Christ that leads to life. We are showing a fragrance to Christ that leads to death. The truth is, you might be the only Bible that someone ever reads. They might not come to church service, even when we open church back up. They might not listen to the preacher. They might not even listen to a preacher on TV. You ought to be the only Jesus a person ever sees. And so the question is, if you're a believer, are you leading a person to life? Or are you leading them to death? And Paul makes it so serious. And as believers, we are to, just like what Paul said earlier, we are to live our life because we are bought with a price. We are to make our body a holy temple. And we are to lead people to life. Not to death. If we live like hell's not real, why would anyone want salvation? If we live like being saved is not a big deal, why would anyone listen to the message of salvation? People are watching. How are we living? And so tonight, there's three things that the author here talks about. Uh, three steps we need to take. Remember, we're talking about being sanctified. We're talking about living a life set apart. Just because you're saved does not mean you're living a godly life. Just because Jesus saves you does not mean that you and I are doing what we're called to do. But I love these three steps that this author talks about because these are real steps. These are things that we can really live out and apply in our lives. The first thing here is take out the trash in your heart. What does that mean? It means take care of your heart. Everything begins in your heart. Okay, so look at your heart. Is your heart, is my heart cluttered with garbage? If it is, we need to clean it out. If our heart is covered with unforgiveness and with anger and with hatred and with trash, whatever that trash might be, whether it's addictions, whether it's anything, we need to get that right. Because before the outside appearance, what does God say in 1 Samuel? God looks at the inward. He looks at your heart. So if we're going to be sanctified, if we're going to live for Jesus, if we're going to lead people to life, we have to start out by cleaning the junk out in our hearts. Now, what does that mean? It's pretty to say, but what does it mean? It means you do a heart check. 
in the story of Cain and Abel, going way back in Genesis, I love it here, when God rejects Cain's offering, but he accepts Abel. Man, Cain is mad. And before Cain kills Abel, God goes to Cain. He speaks to Cain. He says, Cain, you need to check your heart. Because if you don't check your heart, you are going to go into sin. And the Bible says the very next verse, Cain doesn't check anything. He doesn't change anything. He goes into the field and he kills his brother. He had an opportunity for a heart check. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go out and kill someone, but what I'm saying is we can let that unforgiveness, that anger, that lust, anything, we can let that grow in our heart. We need to change it. We need to take the moment and we say, Lord, what do I need to do to clean up my heart? What do I need to do to honestly search my heart, my desires, my ambitions, my hopes and dreams? And align them more with you. Because your heart, my heart, is what God looks at. He doesn't look at the junk on the outside. He looks at your heart first. So the first thing we need to do is take the trash out of our hearts. I can't tell you what the trash is in your heart. But listen, I know exactly what the trash is in mine. Even as I'm talking right now, I know because of the Holy Spirit convicting me what I need to work on. I can't work on anyone else. I can't work on my wife. I can't work on any of my students. I can't work on my nieces or my nephews. The only person I can work on is myself. That's the only heart that I can control. Well, what if I don't work on it, Tyler? What what if I choose not to? Then look at what Paul said here in 2 Corinthians. Our aroma will lead people to death. Powerful stuff. The second step here is take charge of my personal space. Take care of your bubble. Uh, Trey, um, our son, Trey has his own bedroom. And it's a really big deal that he's responsible for his bedroom. He's responsible for cleaning it. He's responsible for taking up, uh, putting up his clothes. His room is his responsibility, 100%. And if it looks bad, it's on Trey. If it looks good, it's on Trey. Our lives is the same way. If our life looks bad, we can't blame our parents. We can't blame anyone else. It's our fault. If we let all the junk in our lives corrupt us, if we let all the junk in our lives take up all of our time and to not live a holy life, we can't blame other people. It is our fault. We have to take care of our bubble. I tell youth all the time, it's important to check who you're around because your inner circle is critical. If you're a Christian and if you're trying to live for Christ and if everyone around you, the closest people, if your closest friends are all people who believe that Jesus is a joke, you're not going to be a very strong Christian. Now, I'm not saying only be friends with Christians, but what I'm saying is if your closest people, the people that you go to to refill, the people you go to you know, to talk to and to confide in. If every one of them thinks how you live for Jesus is a joke, where's your confidence going to come from? Where's your support going to come from? We need godly friends. We need godly people to encourage us. I would not be where I am today if I did not have a long list of people in my life who've encouraged me, who've been encouraged and said, listen, Tyler, you can do it. People who have been there when I've just wanted to quit. When I've said, I can't do this no more. I'm I'm done. I'm done trying to help people, support people. I'm just going to give up. I've had amazing Christian people of all ages be there for me and say, listen, you keep on going. Even today, you know, we're doing the videos every day at 2 p.m. And to see some of the students and the youth and the kids to see them say, hey, we miss church. Hey, we want to come back. That is encouraging to me. It's encouraging that our church folks want to meet physically to, to come back to normal church. And it, it gives you just enough to keep on going. Listen, we need encouragers. We need people who we care about. So the first thing, check your heart. The second thing, check your space. Check your inner circle. And the third thing, 
is take appropriate care of any, any space you occupy. Now, here's what I mean by this. If we really believe that our body is a living sacrifice, if we really believe that we are bought with a price, if we really believe that our actions can lead people to life, then wherever we go, guess who we take with us? Guess who we take with us? We take the Holy Spirit. No matter how dark it is, the Bible says that in the darker the places, the more the light shines. The problem is sometimes we try to live those compartmentalized life. We try to go a certain place and we say, you know what? I don't want people to know that I'm a Jesus follower. I don't want people to know that I'm Christian. It's okay to be a Christian at church. It's okay to be a Christian around certain people, but I don't always want to be labeled as a Christian. And the problem is we choose to turn that light off. And that light was bought with such a price. And yet sometimes we choose to freely just turn it off. Because we're scared of a label. Listen, I really hope that you listen to Brother Kevin and our pastor's sermon this morning. Because it was all about standing out in your faith. Jesus doesn't want you to fit in. And as a Christian, man, as a Christian, as a teenager, way before ministry, when I was trying to live as a godly teenager, the hardest thing to understand about the Bible is Jesus Christ never wanted me to fit in. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to get along with everyone. I didn't want to stand out. But if you look at the ministry of Jesus, Jesus never fit in with the people around him. Jesus always stood out. The way he talked, the way he acted, the way he loved others, the way he forgave others. I mean, you go back to the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you read how Jesus interacted with people. He did not fit in. He was different. And here's the thing. He wanted to be different. And if you look at the great Christians that we see in the Bible, they're not great because they're better than us. They're great because they wanted to live sanctified lives. You look at Paul, you look at Peter, you look at Stephen, you look at all these people, they were different and they were proud of it because they knew if they wanted to lead people to life, they had to be different. If we want to make a difference to the people in our community, we have to live different. It starts with checking our heart. Then it's checking the people around us, checking the space around us. And then it's realizing, man, anywhere I go, I need to take Jesus. I need to live that out. Any space I occupy. So my challenge for you is to do those three things in your life today. Check your heart. One-on-one, -on -one, just, just you and God. Lord, is my heart where it needs to be? Do I need to make some changes? Do I need to ask for forgiveness? Do I need to let some stuff go? That's the first thing we need to do. The second thing is, Lord, what about around me? What about my friends? What about my relationships? Are, are these bringing holiness to you? Is this bringing God-honoring joy to you? Or do I make some changes? And the third thing is, what about the space that I occupy? What about the places I go? Am I living for you? Am I being a holy living sacrifice? Am I being a holy temple for you? I can't answer those questions for you. And no one else can answer those questions for me. It's a personal, personal question. My song reference today is, is All You've Ever Wanted I know I've already did one song reference by Casting Crowns. I love Casting Crowns. Uh, Casting Crowns is one of my favorite artists. Uh, they came, uh, they, they kind of started out not long after I became saved. And so really, you know, my whole life as a Christian, this band's been around. And they started out in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Mark Hall, the lead singer, was a youth pastor. And so they started off as a youth band. And, and really, I saw them a couple of years ago, and man, that's still their heart. Their heart is young people. Their heart is, you know, people hearing the gospel and being convicted and being saved and then living this sanctified life that we talked about today. And this song, I just, I want to read you the lyrics here. I just looked up today and realized how far away I am from where you are. You gave me life worth dying for. But between the altar and the door, I bought the lies that promised more, and here I go again. Lord, I know I let you down, but somehow I will make you proud. I'll turn the sinking ship around and make it back to you. But all my deeds and my good name, 
are just dirty rags that tear and strain. To cover all my guilty stains that you've already washed away. Because all you've ever wanted, all you've ever wanted was my heart. Freedom's arms are open. My chains have all been broken. Relentless love has called me from the start. And all you ever wanted was my heart. God doesn't want perfection. God wants you to be real with him. God wants you to be honest. And at the end of the day, any works we can do, any actions we can do, they're filthy rags. So what does God really want? He wants your heart. He wants you to honestly say, Lord, here I am. You know, one of the songs that we sing the most on Wednesday nights in youth is, Here's My Heart. It's such a simple song, but man, it's beautiful. God wants you to submit to him. And when we do that, he'll begin sanctifying our lives. It's not always easy. But man, if we can lead a person to life, if, we, if our actions can be a living sacrifice to Jesus, if we can be a holy temple for him, isn't it worth it? Thank you for watching. Now let's pray. Father, we're so thankful, Lord, that we can come together and look at your word. Uh, Father, Lord, we're so thankful for good lessons like we've uh, seen the last several weeks. Father, I do pray for those who will watch this video, Lord, Father, for our, our youth, Lord, for anyone else. Uh, Father, it's so important that we understand, Lord, you saving us is not the end of what you want, Lord, but honestly, it's just the beginning. Father, Lord, you want to change your heart. Father, Lord, you want to sanctify us. You want to set us apart for your glory and your honor and your work. And Father, you don't need us to be taken. Lord, you know we're broken. But Father, what you want us to do, Lord, is you want us to turn this sinking ship around and come back to you. Father, that is such a beautiful illustration of what you want. Father, help us to submit to you. Help us to say, Lord, here's my heart. Father, it's dirty. It's sinful. Father, it's cracked, Lord. Lord, it's all I have. And here it is. Father, help us submit to you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Have a good evening.